Good morning. Welcome back to Kirkstone. This morning we're going to have a quick potting up section looking at this lovely little Mesembryanthemum, Nananthus margaritiferus, that we actually featured in an unboxing yesterday morning um, of a delivery of plants from Plant Life Cactus uh, trading on eBay UK. So a lovely little dwarf Mesembryanthemum which eventually forms a quite robust cordex or bulbous growth at the bottom here which many people raise up for a bonsai effect when the plant becomes mature. So quite well developed roots but a, a small plant. So we're going to have a quick discussion of what we're going to pot it in and why as we follow the procedure through. So what I've done in terms of preparation so far is I've taken a very small amount of ordinary garden compost, so peat based compost, which I put in the very bottom of the pot. And to that I'm going to add one small scoop of a long lasting slow decay fertilizer. So this is a high potassium, um, low nitrogen, high phosphorus mix, which is called Grow More. But there are a number of very, very similar products on the range. So the majority of the humus that is going to be in this pot is situated quite a long way down and away from that more sensitive cordex which we want to protect from rot at any cost. So we have that so far, grow more mixed with peat in the bottom. And that peaty based compost, in this case I'm using Jack's Magic, but any proprietary brand or peat based humus rich com compost would do. So I can get rid of that. And in here I've got a ready mix of the compost that I use for those plants with more sensitive roots. Now what that compost looks like, I don't know if you can see it in, in the lights here, it's quite a gritty but still nutritious mix which I think and experience has shown me over the last 25 years or so that this is an effective mix for plants such as Gibeum, uh, Mitrophyllum, uh, Chiridopsis, so other members of the Mesembryanthemum but some people have had problems with losing the roots or unfortunately have succumbed to decay. So what have I made this mix out of? Well, it's a 1 1 1 1 mix, 25% of, and hopefully you can see this, coarse, gritty horticultural sand. Now, this is sand from a horticultural supplier. It's not builder's sand or building sand. And I don't know if you can see it, but each of these particles is actually quite large. You could almost call it sub grit. It doesn't look sandy at all. 50% okay. horticultural sand. Now the other thing we've got in this mix is some pebbles, small pebbles. Now these are between, I would say, 10 to 20 millimeter size. So small but not tiny. Certainly bigger than grit, but small pebbles. So this is for, for drainage and also to supply lime, calcium and some other nutrients. And the fourth constituent of the mix is horticultural grit. So as I've said before, this is not aquarium grit. And these are all below 9, 8 millimeter size, down to about 3 or 4 millimeter. So basically three different sizes of stony material. There's the grit. There's the sharp sand and there's the small pebbles. So those three ingredients mixed together with another equal part of humus rich compost gives an overall mix that is only 25% humus and 75% drainage material. So that's already prepared in there. So taking a trusty spoon, taking the plant all we need to do, of course, is position the plant.
over the pot in the position that we require it to be in, which in this case is the obvious one, the middle. And then we'll start filling in around this lovely little nananthus. As we move up towards the cordex, I have to think very carefully what height I want this to be. Now, because it's quite a young plant, I don't necessarily want to expose the cordex too high because there's still a lot of side roots coming out from it. But at the same time, the plant needs to be actually supported. So that just gives enough room to put some more compost around the plant so that those side roots continue to develop and supply our small nananthus with nutrients and that in my opinion is close to perfect now, as I've said before in other videos, you may think that I'm potting quite high and that I'm putting the grit at a level which is more or less parallel to the edging of the pot too high. And that's because I don't, as a habit, firm the compost down with my fingers, especially not with newly translate, uh, transported plants. So these transported plants, once they establish the roots will move into the soil more, into the spaces that I've left, as it were, by not pushing down. And the watering will mean that the particles within the compost will gradually fill in any spaces, with the end result that the compost will move slightly down inside the pot. And that, of course, means that the overall surface layer of the pot will diminish. So without further ado, We'll go and take this to the other Nenanthus and Aloenopsis section in our small Mesembryanthemum collection. And I'll keep you updated on any developments with the growth of this plant as time goes on. So there we are, repotting a small Mesembryanthemum, in this case Nenanthus margaritiferus. Thanks for watching, and that's all from this potting up section of Kirkstone. Happy growing!